Hello everyone, happy weekend from my little world. I'm Katie and I'm here today with Charlie and I have Evie here. And we would like to just stop by and have a little Saturday afternoon chat with all of you while I'll change this baby girl out of her little Valentine's Day set. And for all of you who have been following me on Instagram, you know that uh, this set comes with little bunny hat and booties. I still have booties here. I don't have bunny hat here anymore because I usually don't leave the hats on my rooted babies for a prolonged time. These are the booties and this set I think will be able to be purchased on my next sale. This has been done by a fabulous Spanish seamstress, Rebonina, who is making most of the outfits for prototype babies for, um, of European artists. She is um, making all outfits for Silvia Esquera and all of her prototypes and a couple of other artists as well. And she made this for Evie. I had it done for Evie when I was purchasing her and uh, or adopting her. And uh, for all of new ladies and subscribers, Evie is my prototype number three of Laura Lee Eagles' Evie sculpt. And I kept her name because the artist has been calling her Evie while she was creating her and we have been addressing her. And so by the time uh, she arrived home, uh, she I knew this baby as Evie. So I just decided, I don't usually keep the names of my babies uh, or I don't give them the scalp names. But I thought, yeah, she's she's my baby Evie. She's like little Evelina. So look at that. Okay, ladies, I started dressing her and I noticed that my camera turned off. I don't know what happened. So I'm not going to undress her and dress her again into this onesie. I'm going to just continue. I'll just show you. I put her already into the little uh, pink pointel onesie that I had. And I, I will try to pair it with these harem pants that I actually had done for my Quinlan a couple of years ago. And since Quinlan is much bigger sculpt, I don't know how this is going to look, but I will just try it anyways, because I just wanted to try it on Evie and maybe I will even pair it with the sweater. And while I will be dressing her, I just want to chat uh, with you about something. I wanted to ask you, <clears throat> especially more seasoned collector ladies and gents out there. How you feel about when you're buying a baby and it doesn't matter if it's a finished baby or a custom order, an artist straightforwardly tells you, I absolutely love this baby and I want it back. In a, in, in a case you ever decide to sell it, let me know. I want to be the first one to know because I want to buy this baby or I would like to buy this baby back when you decide to let it go. So how do you feel about it? I know that ladies who don't like to sell and they find selling stressful and I know not for everyone the selling is easy. Just the whole process of deciding who to sell, uh, to listing the baby, to determining how, what to send with the baby. Uh, then you, we have to do photo shoots, we have to put the baby out there either on any selling platform, Facebook groups or eBay or a lot of ladies are selling on Reborns.com or Instagram, it's stressful, okay? Especially if you are newer in a community and you don't know, um, and you see like, uh, like sometimes shadiness happens in this community and it's, you, you see the victims speaking about it, you get stressed, so I get it. Now, I'm, I'm more like, um, targeting more seasoned ladies out there with my question, how you feel about it? Because I know on one side, it kind of creates like uh, this opportunity not to be stressed. So yeah, I'm going to enjoy my baby. And when the time comes, I'm going to send a seller or the artist a message and uh, she will buy the baby back and I, I'm done, I, I, it's, it's over. I won't have to worry about anything. But what happens if your scalp in a couple of years multiplies, let's say, in value? What in a what if this scalp is the new dream scalp in a community? And let me just explain what I mean. I mean, this community 
uh, and um, this is not any shade uh, aimed at anyone or anything like that. But this community has this uh, like custom behavior, I would say. Every time someone buys their so-called dream baby or not ev everyone, it happens. Let's say one collector buys a the skull that they have been looking for for years and they absolutely love the baby and suddenly something happens with certain skulls and certain babies. Everybody wants these skulls. It happened with Quinlan, it happened with Scarlet, it happened with uh, Amelia lately, it happened with Grayson. Uh, I see it happening like uh, all the time. Someone gets the baby that they have been wanting and dreaming about and then suddenly everyone wants the same scalp. Especially when it's a rare scalp. This was not happening before. Uh, <clears throat> this has been just happening in a couple of uh, years, or past years, when people kind of started realizing, okay, there is a value in older scalps. It doesn't mean that old scalps are uh, like old stuff, okay? Like, let's forget them. No. There are certain skulls that everybody wants to have in their collection because they're rares and rares keep their value. They even multiply in value. I have been saying this on my channel since the beginning and I have been hated for it and frowned upon and a couple of other ladies that have been talking about it in the community. I mean, it is what it is, ladies, and I have been always open about how I felt about it and it was the truth. Every time I see this happening, I just laugh because yeah, all these so-called dream babies and these hard-to-find uh, scalps, those are not new scalps, those are old scalps that have been on market forever. And I don't know what it takes. It takes just for one collector truly loving that baby and bringing the baby to life and the whole community wants the baby. So let's say that, uh, let's go back to my topic, ladies. Let's say that you are over that particular scalp. You have it in your collection and you want, let's say, to bring a new baby into your nursery. And you see, yeah, this is uh, this scalp is highly thought out. Everybody wants this scalp. Everybody's in love with it. And I would get a really great chance uh, not to take a loss, a huge loss or any loss on this scalp during this time because there are numerous mamas that are looking for this scalp. So now, but there's this artist that told you that uh, if you ever sell, they're buying it all back. So how, how do you feel about it? Do you feel it's fair to say something like that? Or I know there is a perhaps a nicer or softer way of wording it, but I think uh, <laughs> the final thing is the same. I'm going to sell you this doll even if it's a custom. And yeah, you're a paying customer. I'm not giving you the doll for free, but I want the doll back. If you dis ever decide to sell this baby, I love the baby. I want it back. Now there's, of course, not everybody will want the baby. I think uh, it's most of cases, it's probably just momentarily infatuation with their work because, yeah, uh, I've seen beautiful babies and I'm sure, you know, artists are not without heart. They're just, just like us collectors and a lot of artists are collectors themselves. So I can see how they feel, uh, how I would feel if I was creating beautiful, high quality babies. Uh, Again, do not twist my, my words, anyone out there. I'm not talking about the high cost, super sh fancy schmancy. I'm talking about good, high quality of reborning, rooting, details, everything, okay? So if I was creating these babies, it would be probably for me to hard to let go. But, you know, uh, if you absolutely love the sculpt as an artist and... you can order a blanket for yourself, I feel like um, I would just go that route. If I absolutely feel like, oh my gosh, this scalp, I brought it to life, I love this, and I would not mind to have this baby in my own personal private collection, I would just do that because, you know, um, and of course, if it's a rare scalp and a buyer provides the blanket and 
buyer or collector sends the blind kick to artists, I feel like it's inappropriate for artists to say, I love this baby, so if you're going, if you ever decide to sell it, I want it, let me know as first. Because uh, as a collector who acquired rare kits, I know these rare blanks are super expensive. It's super hard to find them, some of them. So, you know, I feel like, okay, this is my doll. It was my blank kit and I will decide how, when I will sell it and to whom I will sell it. And I don't like to be pressured into feeling, oh my gosh, the time has come and I have to announce this. I have to go to the artist and I have to, I have to tell them now. And I have to, you know, I don't know if I'm making any sense, ladies, but it's the same like with any sales. Even if they don't tell me that they uh, would like to buy the doll back, do feel like you should be obligated to tell the artist, okay, the time has come, I'm going to... I love the baby, but it's time for me to adopt this baby out. Do you feel like you have to go to the artist and tell them, like to inform them? I, as a collector, I don't do that. I don't do that because um, I just feel I paid for my doll. Uh, most of them are customs. Uh, for most of them, I provide the kits or I pay for the kits when they're readily available for artists to order the second kit. So I feel like, okay, um, this is my property, I paid for it and I will decide if I'm going to offer this baby uh, to someone else without a loss. Because of course, you know, uh, artist is not going to pay you the market value price. They will go according to the price that you paid a couple of years ago and they will probably add the discount. So, um, yeah, and I know, as I said, I have been frowned upon and uh, not everybody likes my musings when it comes to prices and when it comes to value of certain kids. But as I said, it is what it is. Market dictates the value, not uh, market and the quality of work, of course, because uh, even if Quillen is still super um, sought out rare kit, if you have a finished baby that looks awful, of course, it doesn't matter how how many people are dreaming about. If the doll is awfully looking, let's just be honest. You can't just be asking insane amount of money uh, or more than you've paid if the doll looks awful. And if you have truly gorgeous, breathtaking, finished, reborn, and I'm uh, talking of any sculpt, of course, and you have the buyers who are absolutely in love with your baby and who would love to buy, <clears throat> I just don't feel it's fair for you to be limited by um, this promise that some artists are asking their customers to make when they're purchasing a baby. So that's just uh, something that I wanted to talk about because I came across of that a couple of times in my collecting career. I'm going to call it collecting career. And I thought uh, that would be interesting because just recently I heard about, uh, heard this again and I thought, okay, I just want to know if other ladies feel the same way. So what I value about, <laughs> look at her, she's so cute. I love this little outfit on her. I'm not even going to put socks or anything on her. I'll just leave her like this. So where was I? Yeah, so yeah, most of the artists that I uh, came across and I had dealings with, they were, were very professional. They, they, I didn't feel obligated to tell them. Yes, they have been certain instances when I came a uh, really a close friend with an artist and I felt kind of funny when I decided to sell the doll. It was like, uh, she, nobody ever, ever told me anything. Nobody ever messaged me any of my artists or the artists of my dolls. Nobody ever messaged me like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you sold my dolls. But <laughs> I have to be honest, ladies, I felt few times I felt, oh my gosh, I, I just wish that she would not be, let's say on Instagram this week, so she wouldn't see that I'm selling her doll. It was like, oh my goodness, let's say, I hope the sick, I get a buyer fast, 
uh, the baby gets adopted really fast and you know so I can take the ad down and down the road you know when the baby reaches the new mommy and if the mommy wishes to reach out to the artist and say hey I'm the new mommy of your baby that's fine but at that moment that instant moment I felt so bad I, I felt so bad I felt like oh my gosh I I just wish that I or hope that all of these artists that I have their babies, they know that for the time they were staying with me, I absolutely adored these babies. I loved them. I love them. I would not keep a doll if I didn't love the doll because I'm very pragmatic buyer. I mean, I am emotional about my babies. I adore my babies, but these are the dolls, okay? I'm not buying a puppy. I'm not adopting a real child. So if I don't like it, and they're super expensive. So if I don't like it, I have no problem just selling it. So if I keep the baby, that means I absolutely adore the baby. And I try to give a chance to all babies. So if I keep it, I love it, but there I sell. So I just wanted to uh, chat about this because, uh, okay, I'm not going into that. It's, it's something from my um, buying uh, thing. I'm not, uh, yeah, that's not the point. I just wanted to ask ladies how you feel about you know artists just kind of like have demanding almost for you to sell the doll back only to them and I know that a lot of artists say this and you know uh, two three years later they're like eh forget it I just don't want that I, I, they will probably say I would say probably about 70 or 80 percent of artists they will be like well, yeah, yes, well, I'm so happy, you know, thank you for letting me know, but, you know, I'm okay, I'm okay, I, I don't want to buy the doll back anymore. But there are like 20% of artists who are really, truly emotionally connected to their dolls, to the point that it uh, sometimes makes buyers feeling uncomfortable, okay? I'm just going to put it out there like that. It's uncomfortable seeing that and I have to tell you in few instances throughout my collecting career I came across bonds like that and I felt like uh, next time I will kind of like think about uh, you know buying these babies because I don't want to upset anyone as a buyer and I when I buy the baby I know that um, I will probably sell it. I Even my so-called dream babies, that's why I don't use the term dream babies anymore. They will go one day, I, they will be adopted out. Only like handful uh, in my collection. I feel like, okay, I, I'm not sure I, will, I would be ever able to say goodbye, but I'm not saying never again. In this hobby, never say never. Everything changes from you know, one year you feel like this, another year you're like, oh, okay. There always is something out there that will caught your eye, it will loop your heart, and you will be lost. All of your plans, all everything. Suddenly there's this moment, you know, even myself. As I said, I'm very pragmatic. I have my system, I have my list, and I don't go all crazy out there. I don't I don't just buy to buy. I just I don't buy <clears throat> for the thrill of the new baby. I put a lot of thought into each sculpt that I'm adding. And uh, m even myself, sometimes it, it happened to me a couple of times. Uh, I would see a baby and I was like, dang, this baby was not planned and I, I can't sleep. All, I, all it is, all I'm thinking about in my free time is this doll. So... Now it is just, I would like to, st uh, for you, if you could please uh, let me know how you feel about these things, about artists just asking to buy the doll back to be the first refusal of yours. Even if you had the chance to sell the baby without a loss, even, you know, um, you would even have maybe a friend who would like to buy it, but you uh, would be obligated to or do you feel obligated to say, yes, yes, I will let you know? Or what would you say? Would you say, 
I'm so sorry, this is my baby, and I will do my best, but I can't guarantee you anything. That's what I, um, I would say. That's what I said, actually, in the past. Because I feel like, okay, uh, I don't like to be pressured in any way, so it's just me. Anyhow, anywho, ladies, so it's been 17 minutes or more. Uh, I wanted to change Daniel, but I will probably change him tomorrow. I want to go live next week, ladies, because uh, with this topic and a couple of others, the one that I did before, and I have one more topic, and I will do a little like summary, and I would like to go live and discuss these things into more depth and in live with my viewers. So please stick around um that would be it for today i want to wish you a wonderful wonderful fabulosimo rest of the saturday and hopefully i will talk to you tomorrow if not we are never too far away and we will be back for sure thank you so much have a wonderful weekend and see you in our next video bye